while I'm here, maybe we can talk about uh, magneto speed. Speaking of tools that have been really nice for us and working as they should. Had this thing for uh, for a while now. I actually ended up acquiring that uh, back in. Uh, we were doing load development for our uh, blackouts, trying to uh, get a load up that was accurate and subsonic. And uh, the crooner we were using at the time wasn't reading these things right. We tried changing the settings on it, and they were just giving us all kinds of weird errors, saying, you know, we're running like 300, 400 feet per second. And I was thinking, like, gosh, the, I'm not even sure if the bullet would make it out of the barrel at that. Uh, we did a few tests to see if the thing was actually looked like it was doing something. Seemed to. So we ended up going out and buying this uh, magneto speed. So you could just simply uh, strap it on the end of your barrel. And it's got magnets in there. It reads, reads the bullets going across there. Um, no issues with the thing. It started working pretty good. Then we came out with the uh, suppressors and tried to get this thing working with one of these. That's our uh, Sig Sauer Inconel suppressor, 30 caliber. And it was just a bit too high to get the proper readings. You got to have the right spacing in there. So. I kind of looked online to see if there was anything that would uh, make that work. And uh, there really wasn't, other than buying the new version 3, I believe, of, of the Magneto Speed, and that is the Sporter. What if I were to modify this thing to where it was a little shorter? But. Once I do that, there's no going back. I can't shoot it on a, an extra barrel without making it taller again. But I did notice on their website that they sold these without having to buy the thing. So, we bought another one. And basically, I trimmed it down. So that it would work with a suppressor. Put a little rubber pad back on there. Much closer. And that made everything all fine and dandy when we're shooting uh shooting with our cans. Um, I got a little Velcro I put on the bottom of the thing, stuck it on a little board so I could at least get it to stay where I wanted to and hopefully get it in proper view. Um, as far as modifying the thing, it's, it's actually pretty easy. Just remove the uh, strap out of there. I want to pay attention to which way it goes. And you can probably see the, the difference in height on that. Hopefully you can see that. And basically, if you were to take uh, something like this, set it for a half an inch, you can run across this thing, inscribe it, Where you need to cut it, and then you just use a saw. I use the actual cutting wheel and one of my high-speed grinders, and just follow the same the same basic angle. Angle. Now you're going to lose your little catch for your strap to come back around and tuck through, but that's not a a big thing. And just trim it, trim it down, clean it up, and plug it in and off you go. 
And that's basically uh, how you modify one of these things to get it to work with a suppressor. Now our suppressors are about an inch and a half, so the half inch was about perfect to be in line for what we needed. If, uh, if your can's bigger, which I don't think many of them are much bigger, uh, you might have to actually trim just a little bit more. But I was still able to use uh, use our strap and everything on it and the pads. You know, we've got the different thicknesses of pads somewhere. So I could still kind of space it, space it around and make it work like it was supposed to. That's been rather handy. Now back to my cleaning.